Well, we're going to be doing another inlay video. Starbond just sent me a whole bunch of different inlays, so we're going to show them in these bowls. And what I've selected is uh, this kind of cool shaped spalted maple bowl. We've got some butternut. This is a walnut one. It's already got a glue block on it. It was sitting up on the shelf. More walnut. And <laughs> this critter, this is spalted maple. And of course, after I put the anchor seal on it, it still continued to spalt. So I don't know what we're going to be dealing with with soft grain, but I thought that it would be kind of interesting to strip this off and see what it's going to look like. Because I guarantee you, it's not going to look like this. All right, so what we got to do is prep the bottom of these get a glue block on them and uh, get them trimmed up and sand it. Uh, I'm not going to show all of these bowls being done, don't worry. Uh, this one I think will be cool to, to watch and I don't know, we'll have to make a call. If I see something neat I may bring them in, but uh, this is all about the inlay material and not so much about the bowls. And speaking of that, we're going to be using this Adventurine something like that it's uh it will give us a river rock kind of appearance so there's that one then we've got diopside i have purple diopside this green diopside is very very uh, vibrant so that'll look nice we've got here opalite I don't know how this is going to work out for us. Typically, this kind of stuff disappears when it's inlaid with clear resin or CA glue. Uh, probably in a walnut bowl is where this will have to go, but it definitely looks cool. It's not totally translucent. This is Ocean Jasper. And this is going to be like the other one. We're going to inlay that below the surface so that uh, it gives us kind of a river rock look. And last but not least is the Mother of Pearl. And that will have to go into a dark bowl as well. And that should be nice. All right, let's get these trimmed up and get them on the lathe. Along with this inlay video, Designer Poxy has so graciously offered to give away another three gallon kit. So we're going to do the draw for that at the end of this video. So please stick around for that. For those who have commented Designer Poxy in the comments. Uh, first things first, we've got to clean these off using the cuts all sander. You'll see me uh, use some CA glue in the bottom of this bowl here. Add a bit of torn grain. So Use the thin CA glue for that and then ground it flat so that we can get the glue block on it and that way there's no issues. I keep getting asked by a lot of people what kind of hot melt glue do I use for this. Any hot melt glue will work for this method. But if you're in Canada, this is from Canadian Tire. You can get it in big blocks or big uh, packages of it. That's where I get my hot melt glue here in Canada. This question is by far the most asked about the hot melt glue. Really, you know, you should be able to just find it anywhere on Amazon, uh, dollar store, dollar tree down in the US. Uh, cheaper the better. I have not used a hot melt glue that I don't like yet. All right, we give that about 10 minutes and then we'll be on the lathe. Starting off with the 5 8 bowl gouge from David Ellsworth. I, you know, I picked this bowl because it's going to be very interesting for a lot of people. I'm used to it because I see it a fair bit. But, you know, these, these I'm a twice turn turner, so the bowls are green. And then, of course, you put the anchor seal on them to slow down the release of the moisture. Well, that moisture more or less gets kind of trapped inside of the bowl. And if there's any amount of spalting well it will continue to spalt lightly until it loses enough moisture where that stops 
And uh, this here is a prime example of, of that. And anyway, that was the main reason why I picked this because I thought it was going to be really cool to see how different it is from when it's first mounted on the lathe until it's finished. So when I first stripped off the outside layer of you know, the anchor seal and the first trimming of this, like most vaulted woods, uh, you know, it's it's a fine line where you let it sit around for a while to spalt or you let it sit around a little bit too long. And in this case, this one sat around a little bit too long. Not, It's certainly savable and it ends up being one of the nicer bowls that, that I make in this video. But it's always kind of a you're playing roulette with nature and uh and the bugs as well so there is some small um worm passages in this uh but you know that's adds a lot of character to this bowl but as soon as i stripped this back i knew that we were going to have some issues uh with soft grain so we'll see some stabilizing well that's not true stabilizing but we'll see that here in a little bit but you know, you just can't really match that spalted wood. Like it's that, that pencil line spalting, which this is called, there is different color variations within the bowl, but the pencil line spalting, because it looks like it was drawn on with a pencil or a pen, is pretty much the star of the show as far as this bowl is concerned. But it comes at a cost and that's working with difficult grain. The other issue with this was there was a knot in the rim. So that's not a, a deal breaker because when I part in the area where the inlay is going to be sitting, I just need to make sure that that knot is basically centered in the rim of the bowl. That way when I part in the area, it essentially gets rid of that knot. I plan on using some epoxy on this to harden up this really uh, punky grain. So in order to do that, it's best to sand it. I sanded it with 80 grit. That will open up the pores and it'll accept the epoxy better. All right, so just like the giveaway at 95,000, we're gonna use some Pro Series here from Designer Epoxy. It's nice and thin. Uh, it's quite a remarkable difference in the way this looks from the way I first uh, showed it to you when it had the anchor seal on it. But man, it's got some punky areas in it. So just like the, um, the giveaway for the cheese tray, I'm going to use the Pro Series, wipe it all over the bowl, saturate it as much as I can and keep doing it until it won't take any more. And then I'll throw this in the clean room and we'll finish this one tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, it'd be a shame to not use this bowl so that's my intention and you know this is not stabilizing but uh, it certainly will help drastically and we'll see the difference here tomorrow the pro series here from designer epoxy is a good choice for this and the reason for that is because two to one resins are typically thinner than one to ones you can get away with using a one to one uh, if you do, you definitely want to try and warm up the epoxy so that it flows nicely. But uh, I think the Pro Series is probably the best choice for this. There, that's dry on the inside. That's how much that's soaked up. Dry there. There, you get the idea. I'll just keep doing this until um, until the resin sets up or I can't get any more dry areas in here. And then we'll trim this up tomorrow. In the meantime, I'm just going to trim up the rest of these bowls and get them ready for the inlay. If anything interesting comes along, I will bring you back. All right, I thought I would bring you back for the first coat of finish on all of these bowls. 
Uh, this is the spalted maple one, kind of the wonky shaped one. So I'll get a coat finish on it, we'll get a look at it. And then uh, as I do them, I'll bring you back. Some might be wondering why I'm putting the finish on now, if you're new here. The reason for that is if I get a run, either with the glue or the epoxy, it's not going to penetrate into the bowl, especially on the end grain. And it will also seal up the groove so you don't get any bleed through the side of the bowl. Well, there you go. Nothing hugely spectacular about it. A little bit of pencil line spalting. Uh, definitely darker areas in this maple. And if you're curious, this is soft maple. Letting logs sit around for a year, year and a half, this is what you'll get. All right, next one's coming up. So that water luck certainly brings this butternut alive, that's for sure. This is probably my third favorite hardwood Walnut being first, cherry being the second, and better not being the third, even though this is a protected species. It's dying of what's called butternut canker. All right, walnut coming up. Well, as far as walnut goes, it's pretty much standard. Beautiful wood. Like I always say, the king of North American hardwoods. And this is black walnut. I'll actually go and get a, um, a English walnut and show you the difference between the two of them. Beauty. All right, so this is English walnut and there's usually a lot more sapwood in English walnut the white part that's on the outside of the tree is typically larger in English walnut than it is in black walnut and it's typically not as dark. Uh, it's still a beautiful wood, don't get me wrong. It is absolutely beautiful, but for the most part you're going to see it kind of look like this color all on the outside of the tree. Uh, and if you are curious, the English walnuts are the ones that we typically eat. I've never seen black walnuts for sale that you can buy commercially to eat if you're curious this one i think is nicer than the other one it is a crotch piece so there's one side there's the other side got some figurative grain there of course the lower part here is the other is the bottom of it get that to show correctly here so you can see it. <laughs> anyway, there it is there. That's the crotch area. Very nice. And this is black walnut. All right, I will get the maple one and I'll show you what it looks like before we do the trimming and the sanding on it. All right, so after I put it in the drying room, I mean, it completely soaked up all that resin or sorry that epoxy in most areas it probably could have used a little more but I mean after a certain amount of time you gotta say okay enough is enough it is it's really hard and I don't think that uh, we're gonna have any issues sanding this up like we started with so anyway I'll give this a quick trimming that pencil line spalting is amazing isn't it but it's got a whole lot of uh, stuff going on there's some bug holes uh, it's got, certainly got some nice spalting in it. That almost could be um, blue staining. Uh, pencil line spalting, obviously. But there was a whole bunch of it sitting right here. So there's a little bit right there. But pretty much everywhere else in the bowl on the inside, it's been sucked up. And as you can see, it's kind of a, a matte finish. I'm sure there's probably some people wondering why I'm taking this step. And the problem with working with spalted, punky woods like this, where you've got punky areas and then areas that aren't, when you sand it, it leaves a real textured surface. So, you know, to me, that's not a desirable thing. 
this one ends up having a very little bit of it and that's perfectly fine but if i hadn't taken these measures to harden up that those punky areas then it would have been really substantial when you're rubbing your hand across it so that, that's that's why i decided to basically stabilize this with the pro series uh and really you're just going to lose a day because the pro series cures overnight so if you got any areas that you're having issues with try the pro series on it i think that you're going to be really impressed by it and some might be wondering why I didn't use stabilizing resin. And the reason I didn't use stabilizing resin is because it is not food safe. Where once all the designer epoxies are fully cured, they are. So that's why I used the Pro Series and not stabilizing resin. Starting off with 60 grit, uh, typically bowls that do not have any resin inlays in them. Or any resin areas in them I sand from 60 to 800 uh, this piece needed a little bit of filling in those bug holes so I decided to use the black CA from Starbond to, to clean up those areas and that way you don't have any holes essentially in your bowl even though the majority of these are on the back side of the bowl and not so much on the inside of the bowl some of you may or may not know, I did buy the power cap and I'll just briefly talk about it. I'm wearing it now. And the problem with power sanding, when you see that dust comes off of the bowl, well, with the filter housing being right in the front of the unit, that sanding dust coats the outside of the filter. Now, this isn't a huge deal. I find after a couple of bowls, I just take the power cap off, blow the surface of it off, and that restores the air if you want to you can the the filters just unscrew easily and then you can push some compressed air through them to, to clean them out so that was one thing that i've noticed with this uh the other thing is that i have a relatively small head uh, i am bald so if i had some hair it might help but i am bald and um when I first bought the unit, when I put it on, since there's not really an adjusting strap, there's, there's, there's one at the back, but it's not really gonna do the kind of the adjustment that I need it. It was pushing down on the arms of my glasses and it was kind of, I was always fiddling with my glasses. So after talking to Peak Safety, they said to get some bicycle helmet strips and put them inside of it. And that has solved the problem. As you can see, it's, it's up off of my glasses now. Well, it was a little difficult getting here, but we're finally here. Uh, check out that spalting. Like, wow. Very, very awesome. And using that epoxy really filled that in. So there's very, very slight differences in it, but Hardly noticeable at all. All right, it's time to do some inlays. This is the first inlay material from Starbond and it's Adventurin. I didn't know how hard this material was, so I decided to inlay it below the surface. If you inlay a hard material, it's gonna be very, very hard to sand back and certainly cannot be tooled back. It does have some other colored stones in there. I don't know if they're supposed to be in there. This little red stone, I don't know what that is. Oh, there it is gone. It doesn't match anyway. Uh, so, definitely want to try and knock this stuff down as tight as I can with their vibrating device. All right, so I want to leave, um, ideally, we'll have a clear coat of resin on the top of this tomorrow, <laughs> but we'll see. i debating on putting a bead of glue all the way around the inside and the outside of this, and that way we should be able to fill it up a little higher. I think I will. All right, while we're waiting for the glue gun to heat up, 
Let's do the diopside. It is a really nice green. Now I have worked with diopside, purple diopside. I actually did a video on it on the channel here. And uh, it's a hard material, so it's best to inlay it below the surface. And then if you need to do another filling the next day, then, you know, sand it back and then fill it uh, because it's quite hard as well and very difficult to sand. Well, that pretty much killed that jar. I can tell already it's really going to pop nicely, that's for sure. Since I'm going to be using the epoxy to hold in three of these inlays, I decided to go with this little reservoir area of, of the glue. Some people may be wondering, well, why didn't I do that before I put the material in? And the reason for that is I want that, it's very hard to rub your finger across that and, and flatten that material so it's even within the inlay. So that's why I added it afterwards and not before. There, I think that will do. A little hard for the camera to pick it up, I think, but that should give us a little bit of a reservoir on the top and hopefully we'll be able to just sand that flat and that'll be good for that one. With this bead tilted in, it's causing quite a bit of an issue, but I like the style of that. It looks neat, so definitely want to keep it. Mother of Pearl on this one. I've actually been holding on to this material for quite some time and been waiting for it to do another inlay video. I, if you've been around my channel for a while, you know that I really like these pearl pigments. So this certainly, this Mother of Pearl is right up my alley and it's actually a very, very nice inlay material. So uh, yeah, thanks again Starbond for sending these. They're awesome. All right, there you go. Nice and sparkly. Mother of Pearl. Should look absolutely beautiful. All right, let's get some resin mixed up. I'm gonna go with Artcast this week. Artcast is a one-to-one -one resin, so it's a little thicker than the two-to-ones. So I've got the cup sitting in some warm water to make it nice and thin that way it will flow what flow a lot better when it's picked up with a syringe here and it's decided to use a syringe uh, probably a lot safer to do that than to try and pour the epoxy out of the cup there i'll just set that aside we'll do the other one And I'll just let that one weep down through it. Try and change up the angle a little bit here. Of course, this stuff is so porous that this will weep down through it. And I, you know, I'll just keep an eye on it and keep adding more epoxy as it needs it. That's a lot finer material, so it's going to take a little bit of time for that to wick down through it. For the most part, all of the epoxy has weeped down through this now. Excuse me. Well almost the perfect amount. I probably need about another ounce. I'll definitely have to keep an eye on this one until this resin starts to uh, set because it's taken a little bit of time to weep down through this. Okay so it is the next day and we're going to do the opalite 
And I think what we're going to use this time around is the medium star bond. Should flow well through these stones. Again, I've cleaned up my bench so that I can pick up any material that falls on it. Kind of a funny story about clearer inlay materials. Uh, I was a little worried about this one, but of course it's not an issue. But we were walking the beaches and we were picking up sea glass. And clear glass, when it's beach washed, is it, it looks like a sandblasted appearance. And, you know, it looks frosted, if you will. Uh, so anyway, I inlaid a bunch of that into the rim of a bowl, threw the adhesive on it, and it, for the most part, disappeared. <laughs> so keep that in mind when you're using clear inlay materials. Well, that's interesting. It gives kind of a... Hmm. Don't even know how to explain it. A very, very light bluish tint. I'll lift the camera. I don't want to mess with this too badly, but I'll lift the camera and focus down in the inlay area so that you can see what I mean. If you can't see it now. So yeah, there's what I mean. There's the, the color with the, the glue sitting on it. And of course there the raw material is without the glue. Interesting. I can see I'll have to add some more on this, but we'll set this aside and then work on the other one. All right, Ocean Jasper. To me, it looks like uh, different colored river rocks, really. That's what it looks like to me. It's all different sizes, so it's a little hard to try and knock down flat so you don't have like dips and rises in this. Because I really want the glue to sit on top of this because I don't think we're going to be able to sand this back. So uh, I probably should uh, put some hot melt glue around the outside of this. Definitely gives a river rock appearance, I would say. All right, well, that's it for today because I've got some other stuff on the go that I have to do. Uh, we will see you tomorrow to sand all of these back and hopefully get them all into the first coat of finish. I'll keep an eye on these. When the level drops off, I'll top it up until it's nice and flat with the rim. And that'll be it. I'll put them in my clean room. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, so for the last little while, I've been working on getting uh, the glue off the top of the, uh, the inlay area here. And what I've been using is this. Isopropanol rubbing alcohol. And what I've been doing, this one's a little hard to do because it's tilted and the epoxy is kind of over top of it. Uh, I did notice, and I'll show you here, Hopefully the camera is going to pick this up, but a little bit of glue got down in the inlay area. I don't remember seeing that before. There's a piece there too. So hopefully that's not going to affect our design. Uh, this one, <laughs> this is why you put a coat of finish on. You got a really nasty uh, resin run in there. Uh, coincidentally, it's best to have it here than it is on the end grain. But since this is sealed, it shouldn't really matter all that much. So anyway, I'll spray this down. This has been suggested by a number of people and I have used it a number of times. And uh, we'll see how hard it is to get this stuff off.
We'll just let that sit for a couple of minutes and then hopefully we'll be able to peel it off. The alcohol actually works very well for this method. Uh, as you can see, there was quite a run down inside of this bowl. So that was another reason to get the finish on it. Yeah, it's definitely a lot harder to uh, get it off on the inside because the resin's wrapped over the top of it where on the outside you can get underneath it and peel it right off. It actually works quite well. Here I'm using the Hercules and I'm going to be using the Hercules to cut back the resin areas, the inlay areas if you will. Now I tried to stay out of the inlay areas because I knew that virtually they're not toolable. And if you do get into them, uh, you will destroy a cutter. And that's exactly what I did on these five inlays. Uh, the carbide cutter just can't deal with uh, rocks. <laughs> it takes the edge off of it. But you'll see it here that as, I, as I'm doing this, there'll be lighter areas. And that's where I'm into the stones. There's some bubbles in there as well. But the Hercules did a decent job cutting this material back. So after I've tooled back as much as I can, now we're using 6 inch PSA back discs and I'm using 60 grit. These are from sandpaper.ca and I typically uh, pretty much use 60 grit to cut back all these inlays and then from there I switch to the 3.5 inch dipple discs later on. But I'm fairly happy with that one. This is the butternut one and what happened, the problem with putting the glue <laughs> On the rim areas you can't level the bowl so I thought it was leveled when I put it in my clean room I was checking basically the the epoxy as it was sitting in the groove and I thought it was all right but overnight either the bowl moved or it just wasn't set to begin with correctly and we ended up having a losing a little bit more epoxy on one side than I would have liked in the end, it's not really a huge deal. Uh, you'll see me sand it back here as well. And I sand it back so that the inlay is flush with the wood. So no harm, no foul. Some of that hot melt glue ended up dipping down into the inlay area and I didn't catch it. In the end, it's not a big deal. I just picked out the glue and then uh, I was, you know, we'll be able to use some, some UV resin later on. But, you know, uh, again, <laughs> watch out for that. Uh, I, I was really surprised. That's actually a little, I got those little tweezers from Lee Valley. And they're great for getting splinters out of your out of your fingers or wherever they may be. And just a little pick tool to get rid of the rest of it. The mother of pearl inlay was actually the smoothest of them all. I, I was able to, since I didn't put the glue on the top, I was able to actually put the, the level on it and uh, resin level sitting almost at a perfect height. So once I get a tool back again with the 60 grit, flatten it. And you'll see another reason why the finish went on here because there is a resin run inside of the bowl. So once, the, once I've got it cut back with a 60 grit and I'm happy with that, then you can move on with the three and a half inch dimple discs. Uh, once I hit 320, I grind off all of that epoxy material that's there. And then once I've got the majority of it all gone, then I turn the lathe on and blend it all in. And you would never know that, um, that there was an issue there. But if you didn't have that finish on, there's a good chance you're probably going to see the uh, the standing. If you're using uh, clear CA, for sure, there's probably going to be an issue, and you're going to be able, you're going to be able to see it in the final product. I don't think that I even had to do any filling on the inlay area on this one. So at the higher grits, I start breaking the edges so you don't have any sharp edges. And then once everything once everything was sanded to 800 or the inlay area, I buffed with the triple E buffing compound, and then clean things up with the denatured alcohol before the next coat of finish goes on. All right, so this is the second coat, but since we've sanded the first coat off, it's technically the first of Waterlux Gloss.
there you go try and get that mother of pearl to show up for you pretty stuff it looks awesome in this black walnut I know that some people don't like the strong contrasting colors but I do and that's why I like inlaying them like this just want this to show a little better hopefully you can get a good look at it all right still got the other two to sand the uh, CA glue ones all right so before we cut these back I want to show this and I don't know if the lighting's going to be good for us here but it's foamed up pretty bad and it's actually foggy in some spots full disclosure I checked on this yesterday and I noticed that there was a big void right here so I filled it again so this is two days after the initial filling a lot of foaming here for whatever reason I'm hoping that when we cut this back we'll get rid of these bubbles or open them enough that we can put more CA glue on it to fill them. So this is the Ocean Jasper one. And this one compared to the other one isn't really that bad. Let me get it. <laughs> How was that for foaming? That is the Opalite. But this really foamed up really, really bad. So, you know, I, I haven't encountered this before. I'll be honest with you, that's, that's a lot. Now, when I put these in the clean room, from about two feet high, I just sprayed a little bit of accelerator on the top of these. And typically that won't do anything except for seal the surface so that it doesn't run. Um, I don't know. Anyway, let's trim this back and see what we're dealing with. Maybe we can um, trim it right back to clear, to clear glue and it's not going to be an issue. I don't know I don't know what is going on there but I mean it virtually all disappeared here all the way around to about here three-quarters of the bowl two-thirds of it anyway you, you can see where it's covered the uh, the opalite but wow I don't know let's get the other one sanded up so it's been super humid here and after contacting Staramon they're like yeah humidity can be an issue for sure and in my clean room it's away from the main shop where the air conditioning is so it's going to be really humid in that room and we're thinking that that's the main cause of this and the fact that there's actually a, a very large volume of the medium as well. So. Something to think about if you plan on doing this in a humid climate. Tons of bubbles in it. Anyway, I think what I'm going to do, like again, this stuff is still curing. Uh, when, when it's coming off the, off the, the, hunt, the uh, Hercules, it's making my eyes water that tells me that it's not cured yet fully cured all right uh okay i think what i'll do is i'll spray these down with uh the accelerator let them sit for a little bit and um i guess we'll work on the other ones in the meantime all right so these resin filled ones we're just going to use the uv resin from designer epoxy and uh we should be able to just hit this with the black light after that and uh, carry on sanding and get at least a coat finish on these anyway. At least that's the hope.
All right, I'll hit it with the UV light that you can get at Designer Epoxy as well for three minutes. And then I'll check the other spots on the bowl. And if it's all good, we'll be back on the lathe, sand these back. Now this is the one with the massive uh, epoxy run in it. Again, uh, pretty hard to put a level on it with all that glue on the top. So that's, that's why that ended up being that way. I initially started sanding it down in the base and it was probably an eighth of an inch in the base in thickness. So I'm like, I'm gonna be here forever doing that. So then I just decided to trim it up with the, uh, the Hercules here from Hunter Tools. And I just figured that this was going to be faster. And then once that's done, I started standing the surface again at 220 and then finished out at 320, like I said, for the wood portion of these bowls. And then 800 for any of the other inlay materials or, you know, where the resin is sitting. All right, what do you think of that? Green diopside. Looks pretty darn cool. Very vibrant. And the camera's really kind of picking that up. Of course, the maple well, that ain't too bad itself. Next one coming up. Adventuring. That's how Google says to say it, so that's what we'll go with. First time ever using it. Butternut is an absolutely beautiful wood, but it is thirsty. This is my number three as far as my favorite woods are concerned. That to show up good. There's one tiny little bubble in here. Other than that, it's pretty good right there. You know if the camera's gonna pick it up. All right, let's deal with the other two. Using the thin this time. All right, I'm just going to keep an eye on this, and as it recedes, if it does, I'll keep adding more. And uh, we'll sand this back tomorrow, hopefully. Well, anyway, we'll see you tomorrow. All right, it is the next day, and uh, things seem to be cured up well. But uh, anyway, we'll trim it back, and then we'll see what we're dealing with. Just pointing out some of the bubbles that we're dealing with. Uh, breaking through them is a good thing. That way you're able to fill them. All right, well this actually came out a lot better than I thought it was going to. Uh, I've exposed most of the bubbles, so hopefully I'll be able to fill those with the thin CA. The only spot that's kind of questionable right now is here, but we'll see when I get the, uh, get the glue on there again. It may actually bring that right to life. All right, let's get the other one. There's a couple of low areas. 
Uh, again, I, being out here in the air conditioning, I think is really what caused this to cure up properly. So I don't know. Cut back and see what we're dealing with. So I think we might get lucky and save this one too. A couple of deep little voids, but uh, other than that, I think all this, the bubbles are actually been broke at the surface. So anyway, we'll encourage the CA to go down into these holes and hopefully it'll be all good. If you're curious on the two uh, CA glue bowls, I actually filled it five times before I was happy with the inlay material and the way it looked. But it was successful. All right, we'll let those sit for, oh, it's going to be a little while. In the meantime, we can get the second coat of finish on the other ones. Nothing new here, just like I always do between any uh, coats of the Waterlux. I buff with the Tripoli buffing compound from the BL buffing system. Then I clean the surface with denitrated alcohol, and that preps it for the next coat of finish. And I did that with all of the bolts. Well, it certainly looks good after its second coat. A real hard time showing that dark green off. Two coats might do it. Crystally, lots of crystals. Next one coming up. Beauty. The king of North American hardwoods. That mother of pearl inlay, well that's pretty spectacular too I must say. Really liking that. Butternut coming up. And here's the butternut. Love the color butternut. I'm assuming that butternut's going to need another coat. Maybe not though. We'll have to see. All right, what I'll do is I'll sand those other ones, and when they're ready for finish, I'll bring you back. There's the Ocean Jasper. Of all the pieces, this one probably has the most uh, air bubbles in it. Just wish that I could get the show properly. And the finish that I put on is already absorbed <laughs> into the layer areas down here. See the dull spots. So this is going to take three coats for sure, but that spalted maple is pretty darn awesome. And the inlay ain't bad either, that's for sure. Um, probably this area right here is the worst for it. Try and show that on here. Turn my light a little bit here. Other than that, though, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Okay, next one coming up. There's the opalite. I don't know if this is going to show up all that great, but it really does look cool, actually. And it uh, hardly has any air bubbles in it at all. There's the odd spot, but. You know, for the most part, it's pretty clear spot right there. A couple of little areas, but other than that, it's pretty clean. And of course, you never go wrong with black walnut. All right, so there will definitely be another coat for this one. Maybe two coats for the maple one. And, uh... 
I guess we'll see you at the end when we're doing the bottoms. As you watch me remove the bowls from the waste blocks, I'll remind you again about the deal that Designer Epoxy has made for my channel and my subscribers. So you'll get free shipping within continental USA and Canada. Along with that, you'll get your choice of five color bags, the bags you see me use each and every week here. And on top of that, you'll also get a 10% discount on your order. Now this special is running from 1 July to 1 September. So if you've been waiting on trying Designer Epoxy, now is certainly the, the opportunity to, to give it a try. Uh, along with that, they've also re removed the restriction and dropped it down to 100 bucks. So you do have to spend 100 bucks to get uh, the deal, but it is well worth it. All right, let's finish this uh, video up and see who the winner is going to be of the three gallon kit from Designer Epoxy. Since the last epoxy draw at 90,000 subs, there's been 14 videos. I have excluded the short videos. I'm not going to include those in any of the giveaways. Uh, these are the names that the YouTube random comment picker has selected for each one of those videos. Let's throw these into a container and pick a name. Good luck, everyone. Okay, here's all of the 14 names. Give us a good shake. And the winner of the three gallon kit from Designer Epoxy is right here. Kowali Gauze. Sorry if I'm butchering that. Uh, congratulations. You are the winner of the three gallon kit from Designer Epoxy. Please send your details to spragwoodturning at gmail.com along with a phone number. I'll need that also for the customs form if you're in the US. I think I'm going to need it anyway. And I'll pass it on to Designer Epoxy. Congratulations. And she commented on uh, making a box from a core. That's where the comment came from. All right, let's talk about uh, the bowls. I know this video is super long, so I just, just want to briefly talk about them. Uh, four of these bowls are for sale. This is the diop side. Again, I will put some rotating footage up at the end. But I really like the style of this form. Nice spalting, of course. There's the bottom with one coat of finish on it. The butternut one is sold. I should mention that that one, I'm going to give you prices. That one is $200 Canadian plus shipping. This is the butternut. Shiny. What's this one here? Oh, this is the adventure and another new inlay there. Hopefully you can see it, but you can't go wrong with butternut. Beautiful bowl. I can't show you the bottom of this because the uh, this is a wedding bowl and the details are on the bottom. So this one is sold. It's the walnut with mother of pearl. Probably my favorite, I think. There is the very bottom. Again, these all have one coat of finish on them. And uh, this is a beautiful bowl. Uh, this is 200 bucks. That should give you an idea of where I am. Should be maybe a little higher than that, but I'll let that go for 200 bucks. This, <laughs> this is the character bowl. That's what we'll call this. This is that spalted maple, and it's got that ocean jasper in it. Uh, just lots and lots and lots going on inside of this piece that's for sure again I don't want to take too much time here because uh, rotating footage at the end and there's the bottom uh, this took four coats of finish it really was thirsty 
And the last one, this is the Opalite. And I'm going to be really, it's going to be really interesting to see what people think of these pieces. Uh, this is a very unique color. I've never worked with anything like this, so I, that's pretty cool. And hopefully uh, you guys like it as well. And here's the very bottom on that. All right, uh, so this one is 240 along with this one as well. It is 240 plus shipping. And um, there's a couple of really beautiful bowls. I think that's actually kind of a steal at 240. All right, well, congratulations to the winner. Uh, thanks for everybody that's commented Designer Epoxy over the last few videos here. And thanks again to Designer Epoxy for for sponsoring my channel and giving and doing these giveaways. Uh, I really do appreciate it and so do my subs. Next week is gonna be a really awesome haul form. So please come back for that. Something that we haven't done before. So, and it looks very nice, very cool. All right, well, that's it. Take care, stay safe. Don't forget the bell. Please share my videos with your friends and please hit that subscribe button. Help me get to 100,000 subscribers. I would really appreciate it. See you next week.